All right, so our group chose to do phthalates, uh, known carcinogen, and our group members are Jacob, Natalie, and me, Michael. So what are phthalates? Uh, you can think of phthalates in two groups. There's high phthalates and low phthalates, and this is characterized by their long chain off of the phthalate head group. Uh, so high phthalates typically have nine to 13 carbons in this uh, chain, and low phthalates will have a little bit less at three to eight carbons in the backbone. Some common um, high phthalates are listed here, and in this picture at the top, we're shown DINP, and some common low phthalates are over here. And in this picture below, we have um, DEHP. So phthalates are all synthetic. Um, high phthalates are commonly found in plasticizers to give um, the structure more rigidity and flexibility. And low phthalates can often be found in solvents like uh, cosmetics, perfumes, or coatings for medical devices and stuff like that. Um, one of the big researchers in this area is Nina Holland. She is a professor at UC Berkeley in the Environmental Health Science Department. And I've highlight, we've highlighted some of her, her um, important research findings out here. Um, this first one focuses on exposure to phthalates as well as some other uh, phenolic compounds and risk for obesity in young five-year-olds. Uh, next, we have the trying to associate dietary intake of phthalates with um, urinary concentrations to try to figure out where phthalates are. And then finally, down here, we have um, early exposure to phthalates and other phenolic compounds and association with uh, allergic and respiratory outcomes. Um, so as we know, phthalates are a synthetic compound and can be found in all sorts of things in the modern world. Um, and this gives us three different ways that phthalates can enter and accumulate in the body. The first being absorbed through skin because of its presence in nail polishes, deodorants, scented lotions, and air fresheners. Um, also in detergents and fabric softeners, they are unregulated and can actually be quite dangerous. Um, and then we have, they can be ingested because they're found in plastics that are used to contain food, um, like single use water bottles or even takeout food containers. And when you heat these plastics, it actually leaches the phthalates into the food even more so. So that's quite an issue. Um, and the third way it can be introduced to the body is via inhalation. Um, and this is because phthalates are commonly used in vinyl, um, vinyl plastics and vinyl fabrics. And when these decompose in your house, they form particulates, which you can inhale. And that is quite dangerous. Um, so phthalates disrupt hormone balances in the human body and also animal bodies, but we're not getting into that. Um, and so this means they're considered endocrine disruptors. And some of the effects that phthalates can have on the body tend to be related to sexual organs, um, prenatal development, and um, yeah, prenatal development. So we've seen that they can cause sperm damage, low testosterone levels, even tumors in where gametes are um, produced, like in the testicles. Um, and exposure during childhood can be associated with respiratory problems, asthma, and allergies. So these topics are where we're going to be seeing most of our research focused on. So the main cancer associated with phthalates is breast cancer. Um, and phthalates seem to be um, kind of congregate around fat reserves in breasts and then form um, malignant tumors that can then spread uh, around the breast and through other parts of the body. So phthalates can induce cancer in a number of ways. Uh, we found a study in which DHP was associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. Uh, it was found to disrupt the P53 pathway as well as affecting ATM gene signaling, which is responsible for DNA repair. 
A separate study found that increase in HDAC6 known, was known to facilitate nuclear assembly of beta-catenin and transactivation of the SIMIC oncogene. Um, we also found that the activation of MAPK cell signaling pathway um, could be um, activated by phthalates as they mimicked estradiol within the body. Um, so the carcinogenic story of phthalates kind of began in the 1920s when they first started being produced. Um, this occurred because plastics were starting to become um, very common in mass production. And we didn't really know that they were carcinogenic until kind of 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, because that's when most of the research first started being produced. Um, Actions that have been taken are international, of course, because this isn't just affecting the United States. Um, the first action to be taken started in 1983 when DEHP was first listed as a carcinogen. Um, the EU first made its move against phthalates in 2003, which was honestly a long time to wait. So we can see that different countries all over the world are struggling to regulate phthalates. Um, and then we waited all the way until 2008, 2010 for the United States to finally start regulating it in children's toys and cosmetics. Um, and there's still no regulation for the United States for use of phthalates in vinyl products and cosmetics. It, you only need to declare the ingredient in cosmetics. So they still exist and are quite prevalent and dangerous. So this is a really big issue. So there are a few ways to protect yourself from phthalate exposure. Um, you can eat and drink out of glass containers as opposed to um, ordering food with hot plastic containers. Um, the main plastics to avoid are three and seven plastics. Um, so if you avoid those, there's no phthalate concentration in any of the others. Uh, you also don't want to microwave plastics, um, not only for phthalates, but for other reasons as well. Um, you can avoid fragrance, fragrances um, and instead use essential oils, though uh, talk to your veterinarian before that, since some of them are toxic to animals. Um, you can use less processed cosmetics. Uh, as we discussed earlier, they are common in cosmetics and uh, you can look at companies and do your own research as to find who and who doesn't use these products. Um, you can also wash hands often with soap and water because uh, we found Again, that phthalates can be uh, absorbed through the skin. And here are just some of our citations for the content as well as the pictures. Thank you. Thanks.